and the world will bear witness of that persistent assumption on your part. So that's where you live psychologically. Tonight you go home and you may go to a place where twelve people live and no two in the, of the twelve live in the same psychological place. They could sleep in the same bed and physically they're under the same roof but psychologically they are in different dwelling places. So you can determine where you want to dwell psychologically. You want to be secure? What's wrong with that? Not a thing wrong with it. You want to be known in this world? Nothing wrong with that. I only tell you that it will all vanish and leave not a trace behind it. For you're moving towards the fulfillment of scripture. It has nothing to do with secular history. But while you're in the world of Caesar, pick out what you want in this world and dwell in it psychologically. So what would the feeling be like were I the man that I would like to be? Am I that vain that I want to be known? Well, all right, don't ask anyone. Do I really want to be known in this world? Well, then, assume that I am. Do I want to be secure, as the world calls security? Well, then, assume that I am. And then, tonight, do I sleep in a house of 50 or more? I differ. As far as they're concerned, they have different selections as to where they are sleeping psychologically. I pick out the place where I want to sleep and I sleep in it and night after night I return to that state and sleep in it and then the whole vast world reshuffles itself and then that state where I dwell psychologically externalizes itself in my world and here I'm confronted with the fulfillment of my assumption though at the moment that I assumed it it had no foundation in fact so where do I live psychologically? I alone can answer that. Maybe some psychiatrist, psychologist might in some way detect it by probing and probing. But you know, or you should know, where you live. That state to which you most often return, that's the place where you're living psychologically. And physically, what does it matter? This night, many a miser who has a fortune is living in a horrible state. He's afraid of the loss of his fortune. There are others who they also have in a peculiar way a sense of loss. You have read in the paper here this past week the Secretary of State of the State of Illinois and so at the age of 68 heart attack and he's gone. He left in the state he never got more than thirty thousand dollars a year all of his life and he paid taxes and he had to live and he lived well but they found stashed away eight hundred thousand dollars in cash in shoe boxes and all kinds of things in a locked place and all the politicians if they can be embarrassed which I question seriously they can be they just you can embarrass them because if they have any concept any sensitivity whatsoever any ethical code to be a good politician you must put it in deep storage I don't care what they tell me if you want to be a good politician you take your religion and put it in deep storage while you play your part as a politician and so he said next the worst thing next to be next to being a defeated politician is to be a poor politician or a broke politician well he was determined he would not be a broke one and so he stashed away eight hundred thousand dollars in cash and he said if you cannot get a dinner take a sandwich in other words if they cannot for a payoff give you a thousand dollars take five hundred and he went through life that way well that's his concept of life well I hope that you aren't given that way but if you are may I tell you in the end it's all forgiven Everything in the world is forgiven because there's only God playing all the parts. Because this whole vast world will fade, leaving not a trace behind it. This is the dream where you live physically, where you live psychologically. But where you are moving through spiritually, they are forever. These are the eternal realities. And you, the immortal you, you pass through these eternal states. And you go from one to the other. 
and you never turn back. Psychologically, I can go back. I can be rich one day and poor the next. I can live here one day and there the next. But in the spiritual progress of man, he isn't going backwards. He's moving towards the climax. And the climax is Jesus Christ. And everyone in the world will awaken as the Lord Jesus Christ, and he who awakens will know it. But he cannot present the evidence to satisfy anyone in this world. But he knows he must wait for that one confession. It has to come. And if he thinks, as the world thinks, that Peter's an old man, then he's waiting and looking in the wrong direction. It's going to come. Because in Christ there is no male nor female. And there is no bond nor free. It has to come, that confession. And when it comes, he feels himself completely relieved. And he knows that any second then, let the mortal garment be taken. And soon after it's taken, he again appears to Peter. First, it's Peter. And then he appears to the twelve, then to more than five hundred at once, and then to James, and then to the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appears to Paul. That's the important state. For that's the state that when you are in that state, you are embraced, incorporated, and then sent. And he who sees you, if he ever sees you, sees the one who sent you. But they do not hear his voice and their, his form they do not see. So they think they see you and they know your mortal background, your origin. And they judge you by what they know of your physical origin. And they do not see you at all. For you have left it completely as you return to the being that you were before that the world was. So all the wisdom of the world will vanish as though it is not.